Hey, Mr. Baldwin. Hey, Mrs. Wyeth. Talking about the evolution of soils today, so how the soils form and describing the factors that impact how they form. Perfect. Great. Yeah, because okay. soils haven't like always been here. You have to kind of like grow them almost. So we're going through that growing process. And they're soil. not static, so they do evolve, mm -hmm. right? Over Absolutely. time, they change. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. All right, so first we're starting with like barren rock. Okay, freshly exposed rock. Uh, think of like a new island that formed, like a volcanic island or something, or just a fresh rock exposure. Okay. okay. And so our first weathering that takes place is our physical weathering. Okay, frost wedging, maybe some dissolution. Um, we've got low surface area, so not a lot of chemical weathering taking place, not a lot of surface area, and we're just breaking down that rock. So the, the physical weathering that's taking place here is is frost wedging or yes. maybe the wind blowing little grains off the surface that have broken off mm -hmm. and there is some chemical weathering starting with the solution yeah. because of the rain or the snow that's that's impacting it yeah that slight precipitation if it's got a slight acidity in it yeah. then it's going to dissolve a little bit of the rock so at this point from the top to the bottom of in this case this picture mm -hmm. it's still about the same composition all the way through mm -hmm. Okay, so it's homogenous from top to bottom. Yeah, okay, it's good. all the same throughout. All right, so what happens as that starts to continue to progress over many, many years? Yeah, right? we're talking like thousands to tens of thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands it's of years. It's a long time to happen. Mm -hmm. So next, we start making some more surface area. Okay. So we've got more sites for weathering to take place, and we start to get a little bit more chemical weather. Okay. okay, so we've got a little bit of addition of organic matter, mm -hmm. and we see like moss, mm -hmm. and they're called lichens. Mm -hmm. You would notice them like you see them on tombstones, on trees, yeah. on rocks, and they're just these little green, like look like little fan mossy things. Green or minty green in color, mm -hmm. and they're starting to put little roots down into the rock itself, mm -hmm. and that's the biologic activity mm -hmm. that's starting to break it up mechanically again. Mm -hmm. And actually when those die too, they add organic matter to the soil at this point. Okay. And uh, that organic matter becomes slightly acidic and dissolves the rock a little bit faster. Okay, so you've got the mechanical weathering increasing the surface area, which increases the amount of chemical weathering. Mm -hmm. In this picture, we're starting to see some differentiation of the upper parts of it, mm -hmm. where there's been more weathering activity, both chemical and mechanical, versus the lower parts of it, which are still the original parent material, the original bedrock. Yeah, and okay. you can see these pieces started to get smaller in here too, so we're just physically breaking and then chemically weathering some of that surface. Great. So let's come back, you know, a few thousand years later again, right? <laughs> okay, so now we're actually making something that looks more like soil to us. Yeah. Okay, so we're developing these soil horizons. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've added some organic matter, the breakdown of that um, lichens and the mosses. Okay. And then we start getting bigger plants that start growing there. Okay. Okay, so right now we get some, uh, just a little shrub or something in there, and uh, that's even breaking down the material even more. So the roots are, are pushing down into the soil, down into the rock, and spreading it apart, so mm -hmm. wedging it apart, breaking it apart, which mm -hmm. is more mechanical weathering. That allows more water to soak in, mm -hmm. to do things like leach the metals out of the soil, mm -hmm. right, and carry them downwards until they hit that solid bedrock. But you said the word horizon, so mm -hmm. by that we mean horizontal layers, essentially? Yeah, horizontal layers that okay. form uh, throughout, they call it like a soil profile. Okay, so this one we've got labeled A horizon, that's kind of the one that's at the top right now. Mm -hmm. But on top of that even, there's that layer of humus, which mm -hmm. is the organic material sitting on top of it. So yeah. we're gonna learn the names for those all later, right? Okay. okay and we're also calling that parent material at the bottom we're calling that the sea horizon at mm -hmm. this point. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in the next video. Okay. And you can see even that sea, you can see that sea horizon, yeah, see that. Um, starts to even lower and lower and lower over time. It used to be up all the way towards the top and it's getting deeper and deeper and deeper. Okay. So we're coming back again some time later and we're remembering, or I'm remembering back to the last video when we had the diagram. Mm -hmm. Actually it wasn't the last one, it was the rates of weathering. Mm -hmm when we had that diagram showing the precipitation and the temperature. Mm -hmm. So that's gonna be one of the controls here is the amount of precipitation and the temperature yeah. to the rates of soil formation, right? Mm -hmm. okay. And so what I'm actually seeing, it says we've got more development of those soil horizons. So mm -hmm. underneath that A, we developed that B. And 
we'll learn about in the next video, the B horizon is an accumulation of more smaller particles, so a lot of clays. I like to think if you had like a room full of beach balls and you dumped golf balls on top of it, okay. those golf balls over time would work their way towards the bottom. Same thing happens with the clays. Okay. They start to uh, move their way towards the bottom of the soil horizon. So water could be carrying them there. Mm -hmm. All right, good. Um, and again, you see those horizons getting deeper and deeper and deeper, going lower underneath the surface. So we've right now we're naming them A, still being that kind of topsoil layer where mm -hmm. the roots are, where you've got some organic material sitting on top of it. You've got the biologic activity. Mm -hmm. Not only plants, but you've got earthworms and bugs and stuff like that digging yeah. through there that are increasing the rates of, of weathering. Then the B horizon, you said, was an accumulation of some of the clays. Mm -hmm. Then underneath that, you've got the C horizon and then the bedrock. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool, and this will show us kind of all these pictures together. So we're starting at bare rock on the left right. and moving towards a nice developed soil horizon on the right. Okay, good. Okay, and remember, uh, the changes occur from the top, and we're moving everything down as we go. Mm -hmm. So it's not like the starts from the bottom moves up, it goes from the top and moves down. Okay, so something that's not labeled in here, the organic matter on the top, a lot mm -hmm. of times we'll call that the O horizon. Yeah. So we'll say there's an O horizon, remember that's O for organic, and then the A, B, C, and then the bedrock. But there are cases when not all of those horizons are there, right? Mm -hmm. So when we're in class and we're looking at some of the soil horizons, you're going to see examples when there's the B layers missing or the C horizons missing. There are lots of different um, ways that the soil can present itself in those profiles. Yeah, um, sometimes you'll be missing whole layers, sometimes you'll just have one layer, and it all depends on these next factors that yeah. we're going to look into Good. Um, are the factors that affect soil formation. So one of the big things is whatever material you start with. If you start with a granite as your parent rock, or if you start with a limestone, it's going to change the consistency of your soil based right. on what you have to start with. Right. So then time is also an impact, and climate, mm -hmm. as we looked at in the weathering diagram. Mm -hmm. The hotter, wetter, mm -hmm. you're going to have more rapid soil formation. Mm -hmm. But you also will have more rainfall, more leaching, those kinds of things taking place. And with time, I mean, just kind of think of it, we said it takes hundreds of thousands of years to make this soil. So the more time, typically, the more development you get. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, with plants and animals, if you don't have anything that's really there to, like, split those rocks with like the roots, you're not really going to get as much development. Mm -hmm. So think of like a bog versus a desert. Okay. Desert, there's not really much growing there. It's going to be tougher to have biological activity, not really any organic matter in the soil. Okay. And then the topography, the flatland, if it's not being moved, it's going to be able to sit there and develop over time versus a steep slope where there maybe is going to be a landslide or other erosion caused by rain or something that would move the soil formation down slope, yeah. you're not going to have a thick soil layer developing there. Yeah, it'd be tough to hold on to that, all that soil there. Right, good. Okay, so I think uh, yeah. we've got a quiz here for you guys, so jump out to your class webpage and uh, take your quiz, and we'll see you tomorrow. See you guys. Bye.